Are you an investor and are you partnered with a licensed real estate agent? Because if you're not, you just might be leaving money on the table. So when we first started out flipping homes, Jesse and I were both searching the MLS day in and day out trying to find properties off the MLS, but that was really time consuming. Yes, we actually did all the searching, all the offering, and all the finding of those homes that we were gonna be flipping right off the MLS. But once we started gaining some momentum, we actually got some deals under our belt, we grew a bit of an inventory, we just didn't have the time to give it all of the attention it deserved. And so I think at that point we realized we need a partner who lives and breathes the MLS. Yeah, so if you're looking to acquire a multitude of properties and buy it at a high volume on a yearly basis, you definitely should have a realtor partner yourself. So today we wanna to tell you exactly how to find that partner. So first things first, when you're thinking about finding this partner, you need to make sure that this realtor partner understands your goals. Not just your business goals, but your goals of actually locking up properties off the MLS for a discount. So they're gonna be submitting offers that are most likely a little bit lower than the listing agent may wanna see. Yeah, and when we're talking about a real estate partner, like, let's, let's face it, everyone knows a realtor. Aunt Sally is a realtor, your friends are realtors, everyone's a realtor, and we're not just looking for any old real estate agent. We're truly looking for someone that's been in the market for multiple years and has helped either themselves or other investors purchase investment properties to some extent. So what we're trying to say is not the average realtor, the realtor that has the right skills and the right understanding of how to get these certain things done right off the MLS. And that does include submitting those low offers, understanding how to look at deals, what even makes a deal, and having a good idea of market conditions as a whole to know kind of what market you're in, what you should be expecting as far as negotiations, all that is very important, and I gotta admit, you're not gonna find that in your boilerplate realtor right off of the street. So when it comes to us, there's gonna be two major items that we look for in this realtor partner that shows us that they're fit for the job. The first thing is going to be that this agent, like we said before, is incredibly knowledgeable and understands the ins and outs of the market. They gotta be able to read the market, understand what type of market we're in, and that could be a buyer's market, a seller's market. They have to be very proficient with understanding how that affects their negotiations. So being incredibly proficient with what's going on in the market and having those skills is number one. Right, they gotta read the data of the market. You know, where are the inventory levels at? Is it a buyer's market? Is it a seller's market? How many days on market is the average days on market within that specific community or subdivision even? So they really have to know, you know, what an investment property looks like and their specific criteria that will tell you whether it's a good buy or a bad buy and they need to know what that is. The second main item is really how to utilize the MLS not just at looking at properties, but more so as a strategic tool to use to find these properties. Yes, because the MLS can be as detailed or as non-detailed as you want it to be. So an agent can easily just go onto the MLS and look at pretty properties, but that's not doing a whole lot for them. All they're doing is pretty surface level. We want an agent that is going to dig in there, understand data points, understand key metrics that the MLS is going to display to you if you know how to look for them. Yeah, and those three main metrics that they're gonna to wanna to look for are, first is price per square foot. So every property is subject to a price per square foot and a sales price per square foot. So for example, let's say a home in a, the homes in a specific subdivision, their average price per square foot is $100 per square foot for sales price. Now let's say there's one that comes up that's $75 per square foot sales price. Your agent needs to know that that's a potential investment property and needs to set scheduled, scheduled alerts when a property at that discounted value pops up. Another thing that they need to be very aware of is how to classify and how to treat different properties depending on their days on market. So obviously if homes are newly listed, they have zero days on market, you want an agent that knows this and is going to attack those good homes that look like possible investments. But you also want an agent who understands that high days on market 
can be another motivator as well. If there is this reason why the property hasn't sold in 90, 120, 150 days, there may be a lot of problems with that property and it may be perfect for an investor. So understanding how to recognize that as well. Yeah, so the third, and it's a pretty simple and easy point, it's actually the agent to agent remarks within a listing. So every listing does have a description behind it. And a lot of times these investment properties, the agents will put in their keywords that your agent, that your realtor partner has to know, such as home needs TLC, investor special, cash buyers only is a really big indicator because cash buyers are the only ones who could buy a highly distressed property simply because they wouldn't appraise or inspect properly. So your agent has to know these keywords and how to search for those keywords as well. Okay, so we covered the two major things that this realtor partner is gonna to wanna to be proficient at and skills that they're gonna to wanna to have. This sounds like a very hard person to find. How are you even gonna find this realtor? So you're not gonna to go to the local real estate associations. What you're actually gonna do is you're gonna get on Facebook and you're gonna to go to your local REI groups or real estate investment groups. And that's a wonderful place to start looking and searching for this realtor partner. Because once again, if they're in an REI group, they must be real estate minded to begin with. So there are plenty of groups online on websites like Facebook, and that you can find these types of people chatting, discussing deals, and discussing meeting up and doing partnerships. Speaking of meeting up, there are so many actual physical meetups for these exact type of people in your local neighborhood or your local, local market as well. So you can get online and find these types of meetings on websites like meetup.com or other like-minded individuals who want a partner, agents who understand the investment side and are looking for investors are all gonna meet up, share ideas, and create partnerships. Yeah, you could even go a step further. If you can't find any meetups that are already scheduled, why not host your own meetup? Reach out to your local agents, put, put it in Facebook groups, put it in meetup.com, and host your own meetup. So guess what? Now these motivated agents come directly to you. That's a hell of a way to find an agent. So you wanna take your time finding the right real estate partner for you because there's gonna be a lot of communication back and forth, a lot of trust built between you two, and most importantly, there's a lot of money exchanged there as well. So imagine this, imagine trying to do deals, have negotiations with someone that you definitely don't like working with, can't be on the same page with, that's just never gonna work out successfully. So you gotta make sure that you're like-minded with this person, you communicate effectively, and you guys have the same business goals. So at the end of the day, you're both trying to pave the same path. So once you find this real realtor partner that really fits your needs and your goals, and you guys are seeing eye to eye, what kind of terms are you gonna discuss with them? We're gonna tell you what we've done in the past that has worked really well and has created win-win relationships between us and that real estate partner. So what we do is we have two types of frameworks that you and this realtor partner can create a partnership with. The first that we're going to explain is more, I'd say it's a little bit safer for you and that realtor partner. This is because there's really no reason for you guys to totally jump on board together yet, get too entwined, but you can create a successful partnership utilizing this method, which is the commission split method. And so essentially, if this realtor partner is looking on the MLS for deals, most of the MLS deals that are offered for sale are going to have a cooperative commission. And it isn't standard necessarily, but it's more common to find this commission to be around 3%, at right. least here in our market and in a lot of other markets. So let's give you an example of what a commission split partnership might look like. Yeah, so this is, a, it's very standard. It's an agency relationship. You're simply the buyer. They're simply your representative agent on the deal. So they're your buyer's agent. So if you do, if you want to offer on a property for $100,000 and there's a 3% or $3,000 commission, what would you do? You would split that commission right down the middle. Your realtor partner would take a $1,500 fee for finding the deal and you would get a $1,500 credit towards your closing costs. This is a win-win. It doesn't sound like a lot of money up front on one deal, but we're not here to do one deal. We're here to do four, five, 10 deals a month. And if you do that many deals, it adds up quick and it truly is a win-win relationship for your partner. And that was also a very small example. You could probably expect to have much larger credits and much larger commissions paid on your normal home sales price. Right, we did 80 deals this year, so our 
agent, mm -hmm. that's our real estate partner, got split on 80 deals this year. On average, I would say it was about a $4,000 commission split, so you guys can do the math on that. Yeah, he's pretty happy. But the reason we like to introduce this type of partnership first is that because in the event that you guys don't work out, that you're not seeing eye to eye and things aren't happening the way you want them to, you can simply part ways. There's no reason for you guys to stay in that partnership any longer, and it's very easy to go your own separate way. Right, so the second partnership, which is kind of that next step in the relationship, with the same partner. You've built that trust, you've done a bunch of deals together as a buyer agency relationship. Now, of course, you may want to invest with each other. Now, this is only to be done if you've built a rapport, you've built a relationship, and you've built the trust with one another. But how the split would look is more of an equity split model. When you purchase the property, the entire commission is contributed back to the deal. So there is no commission split here. The purchase price or the closing costs on the purchase, those are split 50-50. Both sides pays their half. For the rehab costs, once again, split 50-50. And after you sell the property and you receive, receive the net proceeds, the net proceeds would be an even 50-50 split. So the reason we really love graduating into this model is because now your realtor partner is involved and he's going to be looking for the absolute juiciest deals he can find. Right, he's got skin in the game now. And you, as an investor partner, are going to try to make sure that the construction on the flip happens as quickly and on budget as possible, and you actually sell it as quickly as possible so everyone makes the most amount of profit. So we really wanted to get on here today and emphasize the importance for you as an investor to find and hire or find and partner with a real estate agent so that you can buy properties directly from the MLS. Jesse and I just this year bought 80 properties from the MLS and it truly is such a lucrative model. Absolutely. If you guys have any questions about how to do this, how to buy deals right off the MLS, how to find or utilize that realtor partner that you need in order to do so, drop us a comment below because you know we'll get back to you. Make sure to subscribe to the channel as well so you never miss a video. And until then, we'll see, see you on, on the flip side. side.